What are the best exercises you can do as a carnivore? Hey, what's shaking, bacon? My name is Bruno Panucci. I hope you're doing well. So I have a background as a carnivore strictly for over two years. I have a carnivore background going back a little further than that when I wasn't quite so strict. I was on or off it or some days I was doing it like 50%, but it's because I was always trying to be strict and I had a hard time getting there, but I eventually got there. I hope you can too if you're not there already. I have a history as a massage therapist that goes back even longer than the history as a carnivore. And it goes back to, oh, 22 years. So what I want you to keep in mind is as a massage therapist, it was a two-year course I took on massage therapy. And a large part of that course was understanding the muscles, obviously, and the origin and insertion of each muscle, the nerve supply to each muscle, the exact location of the muscle, uh, every muscle in the body starting from its origin to its insertion and trying to figure out how to manipulate that muscle, how to stretch it the most efficient way, how to strengthen it and bring it from its longest point to its shortest point in the most efficient way. Now, we also learn different ways to exercise the muscles. So even though I've lost 150 pounds doing carnivore, the goal has been to maintain my muscle mass or try and even build my muscle mass if possible. That's tough to do when you're losing weight. Even though studies show that people don't lose muscle mass when they lose weight, I don't think that's accurate because the people who believe that are paying attention to studies. They're not looking at the real life scenarios of people who lose weight. You most often lose muscle when you lose a lot of weight. So if you're losing like 10 pounds, yeah, maybe you might not lose too much muscle. But when you're losing 100 pounds, 150, 200 pounds, you're going to lose muscle. It's just a matter of fact. It's just the way it is. You're not going to maintain that muscle when you lose the weight. I've done it before. I have the experience. I know that's how it works. Even with weight training, you can minimize that loss, but you will never be able to maintain that muscle mass at 185 pounds that you had at 380 or 90 pounds. So it's important to understand you have to watch when you're exercising that you're not putting yourself at risk for any damage. So we want to make sure that we find the right exercise for us depending on the level of fitness that we're at. So if you start where I did at 460 pounds, there's not really too much you can do at that size. I was a strong guy at that size. Trust me, I was weight training and I was a big guy, but I did have a lot of muscle underneath a lot of that fat. Weight training was fine for me. Now I was in my 30s and very early 40s when I was that big, but the difficulty with weight training at that size is it's not healthy to exert yourself at that level of serious weight training uh, when you have maybe artery damage when you're in your 40s or 50s it may not be the smartest way to go because you have decades probably of damage done to your arteries so if you want to play it safe get a calcium scoring test to make sure that it's safe to proceed with very rigorous weight training but Along with weight training, there's other things you can do. Walking can be a good start, but you always got to start all these things, no matter what you start. I don't care if it's CrossFit or weight training or powerlifting or any type of exercise, tennis, a sport, doesn't matter. You have to start off easy and slow. You're going to be at high risk of injury for the first oh, three to four months if you do things too aggressively. Your ligaments and joints and muscles haven't had time to adapt. So before starting a weight training routine, if it's been a few years since you've been doing a weight training routine, maybe start with a good calisthenics routine. Push-ups, squats, without any weight resistance at all. Um, find any different exercises that you can do because uh, there's, say, take push-ups for example. There's a variety of different push-ups that can isolate the shoulders, the triceps, the chest, the upper chest, the lower chest. There's a lot you can do when it comes to a push-up, a lot of varieties of push-ups that you can do. And on top of that, you're getting a plank when every time you do a push-up because your body's supposed to be rigid like a board. So you're getting a core workout as well. So there's a lot to a push-up. It's not just pushing yourself up and down, up and down. You want to go through the full range of motion. So that's just a push-up. Imagine what happens when it comes to just holding yourself up with your own body weight or pull-ups or chin-ups. There's a long way to go to be able to do those exercises. Even if you're not overweight, still takes a while, a few months for everything to strengthen. So you want to go into it easy and not too aggressive. Now, the problem is most people find out what too aggressive was after the fact. So we want to make sure we sort of figure out what ways we can exercise that's not going to damage our body. So maybe if you haven't been doing too much, 
Walking is a good start. Now that seems like common sense advice, right? Just get out and walk. But sometimes people have a rough time even just doing that because it's the motivation behind it. Maybe it's uh, like me, I don't walk in the winter. I grew up in Canada and the bigger they are, the harder they fall. I hit ice, I'm going down, something's probably gonna break. So for the last 10, 20 years, I didn't walk too much in the winter. There's always ways to get around limitations. You say you can't do squat, I don't buy it. I'm sorry, I don't buy it because I understand you have limitations maybe due to knee problems or back problems, but I can guarantee, and this is me talking as a therapist, these conditions won't get better until you start strengthening the muscles around those joints. So if you can sit down, you can do a squat. You may not be able to do a full range squat, but you can do a squat. So maybe starting on a routine where you're doing some squats, push-ups, if you have to do push-ups against a table so you're elevated a little bit, I recommend doing that. Doing a push-up against a wall is a waste of time. There's no point in doing that. Don't do that. Do it on an incline on a kitchen countertop. Start on the kitchen countertop. There is no resistance against a wall. There is zero resistance. So don't waste your time doing something like that. So calisthenics are a great start for most people of any size. You just gotta make sure you're not making yourself too winded in the beginning. Let your body build up to that. Maybe after you've gotten through calisthenics, maybe you're starting off at this level and you didn't have to worry about calisthenics. Maybe you're getting into an old sport that you used to play, something that's not too aggressive, maybe hockey, maybe something that involves some running. You have to watch it when it comes to racket sports because they have a large history of knee injuries because there's a lot of abrasive stopping. Same with soccer. There's a lot of abrasive stopping when you do sports like that. So you just wanna make sure you're getting into an exercise routine that's compatible with both your age and your fitness level. So don't be a hero. That's the one thing I want you to remember. That's your big takeaway from this. When it comes to exercising, don't be a hero. Don't try and put the pin down in the gym on the weight stack uh, because you're around a bunch of other people and you wanna kinda look impressive doing a large amount of weight. Build up to that. Don't worry about that. No one's paying attention to you at the gym. Everyone's focusing on what they're doing. Another thing you can do is CrossFit. Now, the thing I don't like about CrossFit, I'm a fan of CrossFit. Don't get me wrong. It's like a more aggressive hit workout and you're doing it with a team of people. I'm a fan of CrossFit. I don't like the high risk of injury that comes along with CrossFit. So there's a lot of throwing weights around. And I did CrossFit for a little bit. I just wanted to see what it was like. And I really enjoyed it, but I refuse to do any of the exercises where you're throwing weights around. When you're taking those kettlebells and you're throwing them around, I don't agree with that. If there's one thing I learned in college, and if there's one thing I learned from the first day I picked up a weight when I was a teenager, was don't throw the weight around. That's what they were doing back in the day as old strong men back in the early 1900s. And we learned since that's not smart to throw weights around. It's an aggressive exercise to do and it's aggressive for your ligaments, not just your muscles, but your ligaments. So you have to keep in mind when you're training with a weight, you're not just training the muscles, you're training the joints and everything that holds those joints together. And when you're throwing weight around, you're risking injuring those ligaments. If you're 20 years old, you probably have a better chance of not getting injured. You're probably gonna push yourself a little further, which puts you at a bit of a higher risk, but you're strong enough and your joints are strong enough that you can probably handle that. But you're doing it in your, say, 40s, 50s, 60s, take it easy. When I was doing CrossFit, I would take the kettlebell and I would pick it up and I would push it over my head. I wouldn't throw it over my head and lower my body because there's no exercise in that. There's a bit of a leg workout in that. There's an initial a shoulder workout in that, and it ends with a tricep workout, but there's nothing in the middle. There's no exercise from here to here because you're throwing it up in the beginning and that's where the shoulder comes in, then you're ending with a locked arm. All I'm suggesting is be cautious. It's great, most CrossFit gyms have good instructors, but they also are doing instruction for exercises that just aren't safe in my opinion. So not all the exercises, just a few of the exercises, but they're kind of the staples of CrossFit. Why throw weights around when you could exercise the muscle to move it properly and get a better workout to doing it? That's just my humble opinion as a massage therapist and someone who's weight trained for a long time. Now there's different types of weight training people can do. There's powerlifting, there's weight training, there's bodybuilding, there's strength training. They're all different. Strength training, you really only have to do one set to make your muscles stronger. You have to work to complete exhaustion and you're gonna find the next week when you go back to do that exercise, you're gonna be wee itty bitty bit bit stronger. Just that little bit, and week after week, you're getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Now, it won't necessarily change your physique if you're only doing one set to complete exhaustion, but it will make you stronger. So it 
tends to build the muscle the more sets you do. If you're already at a great fitness level and you had a, a lot of toned muscle, it's a great way to maintain that muscle, but one set isn't really gonna build volume as much as say three, four, eight sets of a variety of different exercises would. So you wanna make sure that you're building your muscle the whole way through, no matter what you're doing, when you're doing an exercise routine, through your weight loss, is you wanna make sure you're building muscle, maintaining muscle as best as you can. So they say the most important parts of exercise are proper diet. Well, if you're a carnivore, you already have a good diet. So that's probably handled, right? You wanna make sure that your rest is on point and you wanna make sure that your exercise is on point. Exercise is one of the smallest components to it. And everyone knows you're supposed to get between six and eight hours of sleep a night. So it's not just the sleep that helps, but the amount of time you have between your workouts that help. But the one important thing people don't stress enough is the fourth point consistency and i do struggle with this consistency is as important than all the rest of it that's probably the most important part when it comes to changing your physique yeah you can do all those other three things and have an impact in your physique but if you're always doing it and not doing it then doing it and not doing it like i've done through the years maybe i'll stop for a couple weeks maybe i'll stop for a couple months maybe i'll stop for a few months but i always go back to it and i'm sometimes switching it up maybe i'm doing more running when i'm not weight training maybe i'm doing some different exercises but it's important to know that if you want to make a lasting change, it's consistency that makes that change. So to summarize this, I would first recommend assess your fitness level, figure out where you are, and then go down a notch from there. Because no matter what you think your fitness level is, play it safe, go down a notch. So if you're like, I'm not even safe to work out at the gym with weights, well, start with calisthenics. Okay, that's good, start with calisthenics, but don't overdo it with calisthenics. You can still overdo it. Go into it easy, work your core, do some push-ups, do some squats, don't even use weights. Just do that for literally the first two months. Let your body adapt to the movement. And then from there, move on to weight training. The best part about this is it's free. You can do it at home. There's lots of exercises you can find on YouTube from gurus out there who are working on calisthenics and teaching you proper form with the calisthenics. I always recommend following some of those gurus that are a little bit older, not the guys that are 20 years old. I mean, no respect to those guys, but the guys that are older because they have a history of injuries under their belt that they've learned from. And they've also seen what other people have done wrong through the years. And they're gonna try and give you the best advice possible. So follow the people that are a little bit older, not the guys that are on the younger side because they just don't have the mileage to be really excellent trainers. Trainers. They're probably good for their age, but they're not excellent yet. Once you move into weights, at that point, if you feel like you've had a history already with weights, start with a personal trainer. If you're starting with CrossFit, you already have a personal trainer right there. And that personal trainer is the person who's usually leading the class. They're keeping an eye on you as the new guy to make sure that you're not doing anything wrong. They're making sure you're safe. They want you to work at your level. So most CrossFit gyms are really good for that. They want you to push yourself, but at your level. And they're always gonna be a little on the conservative side. If you're getting into a sport, don't be a hero. You know, that's what you have to watch out for. If you're getting back into a sport, look at all this as just another way to accent your weight loss. Keep in mind when you're weight training or exercising, you're burning up glycogen, you're burning up blood sugar, and those are ways to lower your insulin. Now it's not gonna happen like magic like that, but you keep it up and be consistent with it and you'll notice improvement. So that's the way to go. You're in it for the long haul. What's the difference of another month or two before you get back into an aggressive routine? If you just let your joints adapt. Your joints have been for a while.